I'll tell you a tale of a pirate queen. You, look, you give me whatever look you want. I listen to, to fun music. <laughs> so I promise eventually we'll have longer videos again. Very, very soon, hopefully. But it's not this one. Not today. Although at least we have a really interesting one, which actually, come to think of it, I should have pulled out. Um, when in doubt, have the reasons why you know the things you know. I don't think she's going into this one with any notes at all prepared. I this is all off top of the head. Absolutely not. <laughs> There's a compass on that book. There is a compass on this book. I don't think it actually works. I think it's been damaged by repeated, like, banging over the years. Just bang it a few more times. It'll start working again. No, it didn't. Uh, actually. I could compare it to my digital compass here. I think it might still be working at least somewhat because it's keeping a specific heading. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it's working, like, a little bit. Um, so, so you should north have... is that way. It's working. Yeah. It's actually very accurate. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, we're reminiscing about this, which I brought out for previous videos as well. Uh, because I, I brought out... All of this stuff when we did um, Blackbeard. Yeah, Blackbeard, because I, like many children, I presume, had a bit of a pirate phase as a child. I thought pirates were the coolest thing ever, and so I'm definitely not going into this with a whole lot prepared, uh, because honestly, I really don't think I super need to. Um, female pirates is a pretty interesting topic and one that doesn't super often come up but like for example this book actually has a section on Anne Bonny and Mary Read down here this is a depiction of um Anne Bonny um because it talks about female pirates because there's only really a couple other very famous ones there's the Chinese pirate queen and then there's uh Grace O'Malley or uh Granuel, right which is the the Irish pirate queen that was contemporary with Queen Elizabeth the first um but Anne Bonny and Mary Read are contemporary with Calico Jack and therefore roughly contemporary pretty much with Blackbeard and the uh, the great pirate era which makes them super interesting um let's see we're gonna put that away for now <laughs> but what but what essentially it comes down to is that we're talking about three pirates today one in a little bit less detail than the others uh, because one is really just the impetus for the other two to really get into piracy. So we're going to start with Anne Bonny because Anne Bonny by far had the slightly longer career than Mary Reed and was the kind of the primary partner of Calico Jack Rackham, who was a very famous pirate during his time. So Anne Bonny was born in the late, the late 17th century, like 1670s approximately, um, in Ireland near Cork. Um, and she, the last years that we have records of her is after 1721, right? So 1720 to 1721. So we've got records about her for, for about 40 to 50 years, depending on what you ascribe to her birth date, but that's about it. So she was Irish, but she operated in the Caribbean. And this was uh, likely because, so she was originally the bastard daughter of the, of a, the lawyer that her mother worked for. And... The lawyer did not want, like, the lawyer wanted to raise her in the household. And so they they dressed her as a boy at first. But his wife found out. And so to be, to be away from the shame of having cheated on his wife and produced a daughter that he didn't want to get rid of, um, he moved first to London. And this is when he started calling her a boy. But his wife kind of followed him and knew that he had taken his daughter. So he then moved down to the province of Carolinas, taking Anne and her mother with her. 
and he tried to establish himself as a lawyer in Charlestown, but he did end up managing to buy a townhouse and a plantation just outside of town, and Bonnie's mother died when she was pretty young, but she was presented now as his legitimate daughter, essentially, and sort of the heir to what he had. But, you know, uh, she was not the most well-behaved child. Uh, according to one story about her childhood, it said that she stabbed a servant girl with a knife because the servant girl made her irritated. And she, she married a poor sailor who was this kind of a small time pirate named James Bonnie. And that's where she got the name Bonnie. So, and Bonnie. And he wanted to get possession of the father's estate, but she had been disowned by her. So she had been legitimized by her father and then disowned for her behavior and for who she chose to marry because he did not believe that James Bonnie was a good enough husband for his daughter. So he threw her out of the house, which meant that he didn't get what he wanted either. So supposedly one story about her youth says that she set his plantation on fire in retaliation, but there's no evidence that supports this. But we do know that at some point she and James moved to Nassau on New Providence Island, which became a sanctuary for pirates called the Republic of Pirates. Right? And we talked about the founding of the Republic of Pirates back when we talked about Blackbeard. Um, so although many of the inhabitants of Nassau were to receive a king's pardon for or, or evade the law when Governor Woods Rogers arrived, James Bonney, James Bonney, her husband, became an informant for the governor and he would tell uh, him about pirates in the area, which led to a lot of them being arrested. And Anne did not like this. And she's got stitches, folks. Exactly. <laughs> um, so what happened then was that around, while she was living here in Nassau and in the Bahamas, she began mingling with pirates in taverns away from her husband. And she met Calico Jack, or John Rackham, Calico Jack Rackham, and became his lover. And he offered money to her husband if he would divorce her, but her husband absolutely refused and threatened to beat the shit out of him. So she and Rackham ran away together, escaping the island, and she disguised herself as a man on board his crew. And only Rackham and Mary Reed, another woman disguised as a man on the crew, were aware that she was a woman until she became pregnant. Kind of hard to hide that on a crew full of men. There are other things that would be hard to hide if you were in a crew full of men, and I've never really thought about that before. Moving on. <laughs> So this was probably an open secret. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It likely was. So she uh, she landed in Cuba, and he left her there for a little while. She gave birth to a son and then immediately rejoined Rackham to continue the pirate life, having officially divorced her husband and marrying Rackham at this point in her life. So famously, Bonnie Rackham and Reed stole the ship William, which was at anchor in Nassau and put out to sea, and recruited a new crew, and then they spent a few years in Jamaica and the surrounding area. Bonnie took part in combat, just like the men did, and Governor Rogers named her in the Wanted Pirate Circular in the Boston Newsletter. They were aware that this was a woman, she was fighting with the men, and they wanted her gone. Um, Bonnie initially told Reed that she was a woman because she was attracted to her, right? Her as a him, but then Reed revealed that she too was a woman, and... You know, Bonnie was worried that Rackham would suspect an involvement between herself and Mary, so she told him that Reed was a woman. So what was Bonnie's <laughs> plan if Reed was a man? Who knows? Get herself two lovers. <laughs> so it's said of the two of them that they wore men's jackets and trousers, handkerchiefs around their heads, they each had machete and pistol and cursed and swore just like the men, but they knew that she knew that they were women from the largeness of their breasts. So they, they were not necessarily hiding past a certain point. In 1720, they were attacked by a, a ship captained by Jonathan Barnett, which was under the commission of the governor of Jamaica. And a lot of the pirates then put up a resistance, but they were a little too drunk to fight. Everyone had gotten <laughs> shit faced and they literally were too drunk to fight. So they were taken to Jamaica where they were sentenced by governor laws to be hanged. But 
When Anne Bonny was being tried in Jamaica, the gentleman planters knew of her father and had dealt with him, and so it was assumed that Bonny might receive some form of pardon during her trial. But because of the circumstances of her leaving, she did end up being imprisoned. She and Reed both pleaded pleaded by their bellies, right? So they said that they they begged for mercy because they were both pregnant, and the court granted both of them a stay of execution to give birth. However, Reed would die in prison, likely from a fever and childbirth, and she was buried in 1721, listed Mary Reed Pirate. There's no record in the history books of Anne Bonny being released, but there's also no record of her being hung or killed. General historical speculation say that she was likely freed by family intervention and moved to a different part of the Caribbean and lived out her life for a remainder of years. Daddy stepped in. In 1733, there's a register that lists a, her burial in a Spanish town or the burial of someone named Anne Bonny. But that's 13 years after she was put on trial. So even if that is correct, she lived. Like she walked out of there alive. So uh, obviously we have no actual knowledge if she actually walked out of there alive. But given that the deaths of pirates were pretty well documented, it's pretty safe to say that she likely did not die there in prison. She did walk out by some way or another. And that's pretty impressive. you got to admit. So Mary Reed, the, the other kind of member of our, our duo here, Mary Reed was an English pirate. We actually know a lot less about Mary Reed than we do Anne Bonny. So Mary Reed was born somewhere, sometime between 1680 and 1695, and obviously died in 1721 of fever due to childbirth in prison. But we don't know as much about her life a whole time. So she, her, Mary's mother was married to a sailor, and they had had a son. And the husband, her husband disappeared at sea. And so his mother began to send her financial support for the boy. But her mother soon became pregnant by another man. And then she ended up giving birth to Mary. To hide, to hide her shame at this occurrence, she passed Mary off as a boy to continue receiving financial support from the grandmother, who was fooled for quite a while. At age 13, she found work as a footboy and employment on a ship joining the British military and became part of a crew of a man of war. Eventually, she quit this and moved into Flanders, and there she became um, a carrier of arms in a foot regiment as a cadet, but she could not receive a commission because promotion in this day and that period was gotten by purchase almost exclusively. You had to buy your way up. She ended up in a regiment of horses uh, fighting against the French and still in male disguise, proved herself through battle, but unfortunately she fell in love with a Flemish soldier. When they married, she used their military commission and gifts to acquire an inn named Derdry um, Hofiers, or the Three Horseshoes, near Breda Castle in the Netherlands. So she, she lived like that for a while, taking care of the inn. Um, her husband died early, and she resu resumed male dress and military service in the Netherlands. But she eventually, because there was no way for her to move up without buying position, boarded a ship bound for the West Indies. That was boarded by a, that was then taken by a pirate ship and being disguised as a British male, the crew members of this British pirate crew took her in, dressed as a male. She was taken uh, she was taken on by the pirates and in 1718 and 1719 she received the king's pardon in Nassau and took a commission as a privateer, but she joined her crew in a mutiny and in 1720 she would join John Rackham, Calico Jack, and Anne Bonny, both of whom at this point believed her to be a man. Sounds like she was much more successful at hiding was, it than Anne was. Yeah, but she grew up hiding it, is I think, yeah. like, like largely she grew up having to hide it and then lived most of her life like that, so it was much easier for her to disguise herself as a man. Like, likely. based off this, we even know what her, like, male name was. Exactly. She was called Mark Reed, which, keep it simple, you know? So, um, in 1720, the three stole the William from the port in Nassau, and... Eventually, Bonnie would tell Reed that she was a woman because she was attracted to her. Reed then revealing that I, too, am a woman. To abate the jealousy of Rackham, who believed in romantic involvement between the two, Bonnie told him that Reed was a woman 
as I said before. And although there is some speculation over the relationship between Bonnie and Reed, as a lot of people at the time and afterwards thought uh, romanticized the two of them fighting together. Um, and a lot of kind of stories and accounts have been published over the last 300 years that relate them as like a threesome or the two of them in a relationship or both of them in a relationship with Jack, but not with each other, vice versa, basically. It's a very, it's a very popular story between Anne Bonny and Mary Reed being these very famous female pirates and Calico Jack Rackham being their captain, especially because they both pled mercy by way of pregnancy. So they were both claiming that they were pregnant. So it wasn't and they both just the... likely were. Yeah, yeah. And it probably would have been Jack Rackham for both of them, likely. I mean, we we can't know for sure, but there's a chance. How to abate the captain's jealousy. Tell him threesome. Yeah, pretty much. Um, so Mary Reed had declared in front of the entire court that she had never committed adultery and fornication with any man on the ship and commended the court before her, but was tried after the nature of her crimes was emerged. Um, she did beg for, she did beg for mercy based on her pregnancy, but she did die of fever, um, in April 1721. There's no record of a baby being buried. So either she was not pregnant or she died before giving birth. And that, that, I mean, that ends the story of Mary Reed. We know less about her. Her life is less well documented and she died in 1721 in jail. I don't know. All things considered, that's some pretty good documentation there. It is. Uh, Calico Jack Rackham was hanged for his crimes. He did <laughs> not make it out. Uh, Rackham was active at the end of the Golden Age of Piracy, and he is honestly, I feel bad for him, but he's most famous for having Mary Reed and Anne Bonny and his crew. <laughs> he's not necessarily famous for his own works, but he is. Um, he had deposed, initially during his pirate crew, he had deposed Charles Vane, from being captain of the sloop the ranger and then cruised the leeward islands jamaican channel and windward passage he did accept the king's pardon in 1719 but absolutely continued and returned to piracy in 1720 stealing the british sloop the william and then he was captured by john barnett in 1720 and hanged in november of that same year in port royal jamaica good old calico jack plus a progressive feminist was he <laughs> Hey, hey, you never know. Maybe he was providing safe haven for a lovely lesbian couple aboard his ship. <laughs> Makes you wonder, though, if Mary was that successful, how many other women pirates were hiding at that time? Probably a lot. You'd be surprised. Um, it wouldn't have been incredibly hard to hide, necessarily. Um, and despite what things are portrayed as, uh, pirates did have codes they had to follow, at least per ship. Yeah. Like, this is still an organized group of people that have to live with each other. Yep, we talked about it in the Blackbeard video, the, the pirate codes and the various ones imposed by different pirates upon their crews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think you've seen it in campaign, but if you don't remember it... I have the... not. I've avoided seeing Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed in campaign. Well, I mean, but do you remember the class? Ryder. They're Ryder. Yep. Yeah, because they're because they're pirates. I have not seen them though. I did have them in maybe my old FGO account. I think the first one that got deleted. They're relatively easy to get. Yeah. FGO. So. So this is Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. Ooh, what? The, yeah. I love it. So for reference here, Anne and, is big. Yeah. Mary is small. Yeah, that makes sense. One obviously had an easier time hiding their gender than the other. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. So we don't have a singular sprite of... Oh. oh you, we do. You'll probably see it later uh, when we click into gallery. But okay. um, this is what this is what the two look like. So, I yes, fate has the two of them bonded together in the throne as a singular heroic spirit, oh, just like the Dioscuri. Like, I was just going to say, just like the Dioscuri. The two will always be summoned together. And yes, fate, or fate does retain the fact that they are lovers or at least cohabitators of the same bed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that would make sense. It is kind of what they're ironically the most famous for. I mean, granted, they were successful pirate to, to a point. I mean, they did eventually get captured and tried. But, I mean, they were pirates for, for several years. One thing 
Fate also retains is that they're both open to polyamory, or more accurately, having a third between them. Mm. Um, it's through that tendency that we get an idea of what Calico Jack may be like in Fate, which is hilarious. <laughs> uh, we get some description of their taste for that third member. Oh no, what is it? Uh, male and female doesn't matter to them, obviously. Okay. The two are openly bi. Okay. But they don't like men that come on strong or controlling. They seem to prefer what I would classify as wallflowers, but only those they feel are reliable. <laughs> um, thus, they pursue and make advances on the master of FGO, no matter the gender, to that in, uh, to that tendency through their characterization and through process of elimination. We can get the idea that Calico Jack in Fate was probably a real pushover to them, at least. Mm -hmm. And while he was a really good captain, really, they wore the pants in that trio. Mm -hmm. uh, which makes a good amount of sense makes sense also just just for anyone i'm sure most of the people in our audience didn't get my reference at the beginning of the video but um carlene carlene she's a musician um she's recently released an album about the the life of Anne bonnie and mary reed and that was part of uh, her in introduction song into the album and it's a very good musical album so you absolutely should go and listen to it i'll put a picture on screen right here Last thing I'll note about them here, and the Seki might appreciate this as a One Piece fan, uh, they don't care about the Holy Grail at all, but rather, uh, not for its wish element at least, but rather just because it's a treasure to be pursued. I love that. I feel that. like that, that appeals to the One Piece like pirate nature. It really does. I like this. This is adorable. All right. Oh, it's Francis Drake, Mary. If we had a good captain like her, we would be able to have good fights, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Master. Just now, I saw a bearded man, which I shouldn't have, so my finger slipped. Don't worry. If we dump his body into the sea, then all evidence will be washed away. Shouldn't we gouge out his eyes for the duration of the summer period? Acknowledged. <laughs> they, okay, tolerate Bartholomew, despite the fact. All right. Christopher Columbus, they're jealous of the fact he caught a happy ending and hope he gets his comeuppance. <laughs> yes! <laughs> All right, Mordred swimsuit. Uh, excuse me, that surfer has been glaring at me constantly. Swimsuit servants, what are you afraid of? Here is the great duo that combined the set of large and small. It doesn't matter how alluring the others are, for there's no one out there that will suppress our charm. Or so they think. I loved Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed as a child. I thought they were so cool. So, as far as how they fight... Anne fights with her rifle, and Mary uses her cutlass. Mm -hmm. The two's entire thing is the opportunities open to them by being a single servant. Mm -hmm. They draw out the best in what would be their stats individually and function as one unit, sharing everything, including their general health in combat. In combat, Mary tends to take point while Anne provides supportive fire from a distance. Okay. See magic resistance in riding, but voyage skill instead of riding, technically. Marksmanship, dazzling pirate princesses, <laughs> voyage, their writing skill has been lost due to this, but it's an upgrade from voyage and docking assault, okay. Combination, and then noble phantasm is Caribbean Freebird. So this noble phantasm involves their teamwork at raising hell in the final stand oh, yeah. before they were arrested. Uh, they continue to fight in unison, becoming stronger the more dire circumstances get. Oh, good. So... So the, when I was saying this is an older servant, this was from the second FGO, like the first major FGO update. Uh, oh, I can hear the two of them both speaking. Also, anytime I just hear Orewa Kaizoku, I just think Orewa Kaizoku Oni. I really think they need an animation update that takes advantage of the both of them. Yeah, they really do. More than just having the voice of both. I'd love to he see both there. Because, like, Gemini has both. Yeah. Yeah. Like, maybe, like, obviously I understand why they aren't both in the sprite. Yeah. But, like, they should both be in the attack animation. Yeah. Oh, yes. At least we finally get to see Anne Bonnie in the NP. Overkill. Very worth it. But that's not it for them. Okay. They've got one more form than Sansan. Hey! They have a summer variant. 
During summer, they become an archer servant. Uh, and Anne takes point while Mary Reed takes a little bit of a backseat. Oh my goodness. They also become a little bit bolder in their pursuits, including uh, their pursuits to get a third bedfellow, <laughs> uh, due to their cutting back a little on their, uh, on their, um, I don't know what to say. <laughs> cutting back on something. Yeah. Aww. Treasure, the sea. Besides Anne taking more active roles in combat here, they really haven't changed much in combat tendency. Anne still has a gun and Mary still has a cutlass. Yeah. Okay. So magic resistance, independent action, beach flower, treasure hunt, sea, honor of pirates. Yeah. The rank drops a little because they weren't captains. Yeah, but that's fine. Their honor rises when their ship captain becomes cowardly. Pair them with Blackbeard and watch it rise. So that, you'll remember in Okeanos during the campaign yeah. they did team up with Blackbeard. That is the literal only reason why they team up with Blackbeard is because he pairs well with them as far as uh, letting them take charge. That makes sense. So the, their noble phantasm here is called Caribbean Freebird Act 2? Yes, it is exactly the same. It's just reversing the order of who goes first. Okay. I did open up the... Oh, hey, they also do Artemis and Orion. Um, and the Alf Alethia forms of Aphrodite, Demeter, Poseidon, and Zeus. And Charles Babbage, who I haven't seen yet. Okay. Yes, that sword just opened up into a gun. It is a little funny, I will say, stepping away from fate for a second. It is a little funny that both Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed had a very similar upbringing in that they had parents who kind of, out of out of the out of the want to hide themselves from disgrace because they had cheated on their partners, disguised their children as boys to try to pass them off as not disgraceful to have, and then fled eventually because of that. You know. All right, I'll start with, is this the same gallery? No, because they're different. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. <gasps> Baseball! Oh, my God. You get both. I love it. Baseball bat. Catcher's mitt. Love it. Okay. And some expression sheets. Oh. Um. Aww, she looks like she's going to cry down here in the bottom. They're so cute. Adorable. <laughs> Click too far. All right. Nothing special down there. Double feet fix. Two for the price of one. Uh... <laughs> ah, okay. It did open. All right. Okay, so, oh, it didn't open the way it was supposed to. <laughs> All right, treasure chocolate. Valentine's. Uh, what? I'm supposed to write a message. Sure thing. Uh, master, I've tasted this numerous times, so I think it should be safe. I'd be happy if you ate it all. Also, thanks for everything. Someday I'd like to um, go on a cruise with you and Anne. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, what was the first one? All right, Calico Jack. Uh... It doesn't matter if you are a man or a woman, the death of a pirate is brutal. That's why they both fought to the bitter end. They fired their guns, swung their cutlasses, screamed with all their might, bathed in their enemy's blood, just like two berserkers on a battlefield. Those in command of them, those that called themselves pirates, did not fight as bravely as they did. They enjoyed taking, but weren't prepared to be taken. Those cowards hid on their ship, trembling like a bunch of losers. There were only two pirates on the ship of Calico Jack. Mary Reed and Anne Bonny. I agree. <laughs> From Wonderland. Oh, we saw this with a different servant, and I think I thought that was Jack. What might be going on here is that might be Jack and Anne Bonnie, but Mary, not Mary Reed. I could be wrong, because Jack has the scar on her face. But this has two scars. Does that match Mary Reed? Yeah, that's Mary Reed's scars. Oh, I don't know where, what's going on. Could be it. Could have been a mistake. I think that might be Jack in the background. <laughs> Maybe we fucked up. I thought this was Jack the whole long time ago, and that's actually okay. So 
Edward Teach, Jack the Ripper, Nursery Rhyme, and Jean d'Arc Santa, Lil Santa Lily are in this image. No idea. I guess they're in the very background. Yeah, they which must be. Which is why be. we didn't even think about it before. Yeah, because we, we deadass just thought that that was Jackie. It's not. Huh. So we've seen this. We've read it. And Anne and Mary have come to greet you. These two are in cute outfits and they look like they popped right out of a picture book. Snow pirates. <gasps> Woo! And Paul Bunyan? No, I think that's supposed to be... Actually, that might be... That is Bunyan. Yeah, and Blackbeard, of then course. Mary's. Destroy! <laughs> Good girl. When you think of winter, you think of snow. When you think of snow, you think of snowmen. When you think of snowmen, girls love them, and thus the gentleman has the ultimate revelation. Oh, I get it. I just have to become a snowman. The snowman will explode in ten. Nine. <laughs> Pirates of the Jungle. Oh my goodness, they're so cute. Rawr. Rawr. It's so cute. If there's treasure to be found, then we have to go look for it. We don't care if it's inside an impenetrable jungle or guarded by some creature nobody's ever seen. What kind of pirates would we be if we backed down from a treasure hunt? You know, they really remind me of Luffy. <gasps> <laughs> hawk Scotty? That's, that's Skahawk. It's Skahawk, okay. Oh, wow. Interesting. So this must be... That's Mary. Yeah. It's a curse. Mankind has ignored the rules of Mother Nature and continued to increase the number of bunnies according to our desire. It's time we pay the price of our actions. No one can stop the bunnies now that they have multiplied so much. They are coming. Just to hop away. Woo! Please come to my house soon. I think that's just literally every servant has a bunny outfit. I love that. Okay. Yeah, because we have a different baseball. Oh my goodness, we get two baseballs. Different artists, too. Newer servant, isn't it? No, this is actually not that much oh. newer than uh, Anne Bond and Mary Reads just original. Get more, just get some, some more facial experience. See, she's got the two scars, the one like completely bisecting her face, not just on her cheek. I would say that Anne Bond and Mary Reed's original was like first half a year of FGO's release. This is like only about a year, year and a half out from FGO's release. Oh, interesting. Okay. Oh, only two. Taking a bath. Of course I understand. It's not a coincidence, is it? Of course I got it. It's a coincidence, right? It's cruel to even look at my body covered with wounds. It's brutal to speak of my poor body covered with wounds. But if you stare at me with such passion, my body feels hot. Stop it. My shameful body feels like it's shriveling up. Even so, that doesn't mean I want you turning around now. What? So you don't want to see it after all? Then let's make a compromise. Here's a proposal. Why not close your eyes and join me? If you close your eyes, it's okay to join me. But first I have an important question. Hold on. There's something important you've got to tell me first. Which bath do you want to enter? Just an ordinary chocolate? An ordinary looking chocolate that contains a key inside. It seems that this is a key to their room. You could use this key to get into their room at night. Or you could not do that. Perhaps they might be waiting so you could help them clean their room. Can you tell they're coming on stronger? <laughs> but they're so cute. But they're so cute. Okay, I, I was really excited to do Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. I've, I've been trying to get it into the schedule for a while now. Yes, yes, you have. So I am very excited that we did Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed. I like them. I think I would like an update on the sprites. It'd be nice, especially on that first one. Yeah. And the second one, too, but give them some updates. A little so bit more they... like the Gemini you know, yeah. so you could like see two. Unfortunately, FGO doesn't do animation updates anymore. You know, this year's updates video is going to be much easier because they haven't been doing animation updates, FGO. <laughs> you seem mad. I'm a little bit pissed. <laughs> um, do you like Anne, Bonnie, and Mary Reed? They're all right. I don't have that much opinion on them because I wasn't as familiar with their original story before FGO. Mm -hmm. And in FGO, they don't make that many appearances. They're mostly relegated to side events and Aww. gag rolls in summer. Oh, Darn. Are they particularly good in any sort of... They're not like super strong servants, right? They're they're not like at all yeah. that noteworthy. Mm. I don't know. I've never heard anything crazy bad about... Like there are some servants where I'm like, 
hearing like, oh, this servant is practically unusable. Some of my fav one of my favorites is practically unusable. Aww. But um, no, I I don't. These two aren't like at all in the, the like talked about metal wise. Well, I like them. Well, you like what you like. Everyone has their favorites, <laughs> and FGO has made it perfectly possible to take bad servants and make them at least usable in a lot of content. That's true. That's true. So, do you have a hint for our next servant? Do I need to check what our next servant is? I have a hint and a promise. Okay. You'll be seeing at least one picture of Koo in our next video. <gasps> oh, I'm so excited. I've forgotten who the next servant is. We'll see you next time.